Hi, you're watching Analog Output. This is Rich Holmes, and today I wanted to show you something I found in the basement the other day while I was poking around. A synthesizer. So this is a Gakken SX150, which I bought about 10 years ago. Brand new for the princely sum of about $45. So yeah, it's a toy, but it's kind of fun. Missing a couple knobs, you see. I don't know what happened to them. But, you know, it's got, uh, it's got an envelope generator here, which can be used to control the pitch. There's a low-frequency oscillator switchable waveforms also controls the pitch you've got uh, a filter with a cutoff control and on off resonance and um, what you don't have is a keyboard and you don't have a MIDI port and you don't have a control voltage input what you do have is a ribbon control so what's happening there is you've got a conductive ribbon and you've got this stylus here and you uh, kind of touch the stylus to the ribbon and see if anything happens. It's a little flaky. It's been around for a while. There we go. Now if you want to play, you know, some virtuoso piece of music like uh, oh I don't know Mary had a little lamb it's not really ideal for that you know you, you know you you really want a, a keyboard for something like that but on the other hand you know if you want to do something a little less conventional can your keyboard do something like this Probably not. It's kind of fun. And ribbon controllers have been around a long time. There were, um, Moog was making ribbon controllers for their synthesizers back at least as early as the early 1970s. Um, so I'm thinking, hey, wouldn't it be kind of cool to make a ribbon controller for a Moog Mother 32 synthesizer? So that's what I'm going to do. So how do you make a ribbon controller? Well, you go on to Google and you find out how other people have done it, because people have done that. And you'll find lots of forum posts and articles and videos and things. Um, people have used a videotape. You take a, a you know cassette, video cassette, and you yank out a piece of videotape and you use that as the basis for making a ribbon controller. Um, people have used um, anti-static bags for uh, electronics. Um, again, cut off a piece of an old electric, uh, you know, anti-static bag and um, stick it down and work from there. Which, you know, if you're sitting on a stash of old videotapes or a stash of old anti-static bags that might work. I happen not to be. Uh, and I thought, well, you know, cheapskate that I am, I'm still willing to pay for a more professional kind of a starting point. So what I've got is this. So this is something called a soft pot. And you can get these things from spark fun you can get them from mauser electronics um this one they come in various lengths this one's 500 millimeters um you can get them up to apparently up to a meter although they're not in stock anywhere um you can get them down to much shorter lengths than that uh 500 millimeters seemed a good length to me and uh it cost about 20 bucks 
And what this is, is you just got, um, what you've got is you've got a resistive strip and then a conductive strip with a gap between the two. And then if you, uh, if you look closely on this end here, you can see that you've got a connection. You've got three connectors here. One of them connects to one end of the resistive strip. The other connects down there to the other end of the resistive strip. And the third one connects to the conductive strip. And when you touch this thing, the conductive strip and the resistive strip come into contact. And what you end up with is behavior that's pretty much like a regular potentiometer. So in a potentiometer, you've got a resistive element and you've got connectors that go to both the ends of that resistive element. And then there's a wiper connected to the middle. And when you turn your knob, it changes the resistance between the wiper and each end. So what's happening in electronic symbols is this. You've got your input voltage and it connects to the resistive element. The other end goes to ground and then you've got a wiper here which moves up and down here and gives you in effect something like this. You've got resistor in the junction and another resistor. This is ground. This is input voltage. And the voltage here can vary if this is, for instance, 5 volts. This voltage can go anywhere from 0 if you've got the wiper down here to 5 volts if you've got the wiper out over here. So the same thing is happening in the soft pot. Now, if you wanted to make a control voltage of 0 to 5 volts to go into your synthesizer, you might think this is how you do it. You connect up 5 volts to one end of the soft pot, ground the other end, and take the voltage at the, at the wiper, the middle connector. You could try doing that, but it's probably not what you really want. For one thing, if you um, are using, for instance, an old synthesizer with a, a control voltage keyboard, it actually has two outputs. It's got the control voltage output, which tells you which key you've got, which key you're pressing, and it's got a gate output which tells you whether or not there's a key pressed. So if you are not pressing a key, the gate output is zero. If you press a key, the gate output goes up to, say, five volts, and it stays at five volts until you release the key, and the gate turns off again. So this goes into your, uh, excuse me, BFO, of course, voltage control, B, C, O. I know what I'm talking about. This goes into your voltage control oscillator uh, to control the frequency. And this you can send to your envelope generator. And it will trigger the envelope generator to give you your envelope to control the, the, uh, the amplitude. Well, if you do this, you've got your control voltage, but you don't have your gate and it would be nice to be able to make a gate out of this. So you might think, well, we need to attach some kind of circuitry here to uh, figure out when we should send a gate. Okay, that's fine, but we've got another problem here, which is that unlike a normal potentiometer, if I'm turning the knob and I stop turning the knob, it just stays at the last place that I left it. With the soft pot, when you take your finger off, it disconnects the wiper from the resistor. So the wiper is just sitting out here, not connected 
essentially to anything. So it's floating. It's the uh, the voltage between the wiper and the ground is not well defined, and that's not a particularly good thing to be trying to deal with. So how do you take care of that? Well, one way to do that is this. Instead of making a voltage divider across the potentiometer, what you do is this. You've got your potentiometer or your soft pot. Ground one end. Here's the wiper. And instead of attaching your 5 volts here, you put your 5 volts into a fixed resistor and you connect the other end of the fixed resistor to the wiper. This is known as a pull-up resistor. And what happens is when you take your finger off the soft pot and this thing disconnects, it's still connected to the 5 volts. So then the voltage between here and ground is well defined. It's, per, it's, it's specifically it's 5 volts. If you are putting your finger on the soft pot, then the voltage that you measure here, this is your uh, V out here, the voltage that you measure at that point will vary from, if you're at this end, zero. If you're at this end, well, at this end you'll get a voltage that's less than 5 volts. Exactly what it is is going to depend on the relationship between the fixed resistor here and the resistor of the full length of the soft pot there. So, okay, that improves things. For one thing, it tells you that if you're looking at V out and you see that it's equal to 5 volts, then that means you're not touching the soft pot. So you know you can turn off your gate. If it's less than 5 volts, you can turn on the gate and then you can look at that voltage and you can see what it is. And from that, you can figure out you can scale that to a voltage between 0 and 5 volts to send out as your control voltage. All of which is kind of complicated. And if you want to do that in electronics, you're welcome to try. I am not an electronics expert. I wouldn't know how to do it. But another approach is instead of doing it in hardware, you do it in software. So a couple of years ago, somebody by the name of Chip Audet posted a couple of blog posts about making a homemade ribbon controller. And the approach taken there was um, do everything in software. So what you have is a diagram of the whole system that looks like this. You've got, uh, you've got some jacks for your inputs and outputs. You've got a couple resistors. You've got this box over here, which is an integrated circuit. And this box here is a microcontroller board. It's specifically, it's an Arduino. So what you've got on here is a, is a microcontroller chip. And uh, you have the output from the soft pot. The, the voltage on the wiper is connected to the Arduino. There's an internal pull-up resistor that's enabled on the Arduino, so it connects to 5 volts through that pull-up resistor. And on the Arduino, there's an analog-to-digital converter that takes the voltage and converts it to a, uh, a digital number. And then the software just looks at that number and figures out what to do. If the number corresponds to 5 volts, then the software knows it's time to uh, lower the gate if the soft if the if the voltage goes below five volts the software raises the gate and then takes the voltage that it reads and rescales it and uh, makes it a 12-bit number in the range from zero to four thousand ninety five and then it sends that number out serially on another pin 
to this integrated circuit, which is a digital to analog converter uh, because the Arduino has uh, analog to digital, but it doesn't have digital to analog. So it converts this 12-bit number that it sends over the serial line uh, into an output voltage in the range from 0 to 5 volts, and that's your control voltage. And actually, there's, there's two DACs on one chip, so what happens is the same number is sent to both DACs. They both do the same conversion. They both make the same output. So you get two control voltage outputs, which is nice because you can use one to, uh, uh, to drive your oscillator and one to make the filter track the oscillator frequency. And then the, um, the gate comes just directly from a digital output pin on the Arduino. So that is the approach that Audet took, and that's what I'm going to do. A um, couple things I'm going to be doing a little bit differently. One is that Audet had uh, just two output jacks, one uh, control voltage and the other being a stereo jack carrying both the control voltage and the gate on a two conductor cable and then you have to split the uh, two conductor cable at uh, the synthesizer. I'm figuring this is just going to sit next to the synthesizer. The cables are just a few inches long. No big deal to have three of them. So I'm just going to put three uh, uh, output jacks and use uh, three single conductor cables to carry the signals to the synthesizer. The other thing is the other thing is that um, Audet used particularly a an Arduino Micro, which is a particular version of the Arduino board. And um, I don't have an Arduino Micro. I've got what do I have? Well, I've got uh, I've got an Arduino Uno, and I've got a let's see, I've got a uh, a SparkFun breadboard, and got a couple of those and I've got a few of these uh, this is um, this is a, a uh, spark fun pro mini the spark fun boards I I got several of these a number of years ago and then I've never done anything with them this one's never been out of the bag um, so this is this is tiny this is good for embedding and I kind of figure this is probably the best one to use but there's a couple differences between this and the Arduino Micro. One is that the Micro has um, a six-pin header for the serial communication that's used to talk to the uh, to the DAC chip. Um, this thing here does not have that six-pin header. It's, as I understand it, no big deal because those same th those header pins are just connected. Uh, to the same output, output pins on the microcontroller as some of these um, connectors on the edge of the board. So you just connect to there instead of to the header and it should be fine. The other thing is that the, 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 the Pro Mini does not have a USB interface which you need to, uh, to upload the software to the Arduino. So in order to use that you need some sort of um, USB to serial adapter uh, like this one here or this is another one. Why do I have two of them? Not sure. Maybe I lost one of them. I don't know. But uh, I have two now. Um, so this will have to be connected to the Arduino in order to upload the software to the Arduino and the minor difficulty there is that this uh, this thing is a 5 volt version of the Pro Mini. This thing and this thing are both 3.3 volt versions of the uh, USB con converter. So ideally you would want a 5 volt version of this to talk to the 5 volt version of this. But from what I've read online um, it sounds as though it will usually work to use a 3.3 volt um, converter to talk to a 5 volt Arduino. 
we'll see. If it doesn't work, I'm going to have three of these, but one of them would be five volts. Uh, if it does work, then yay, we'll just plow on from there. So, um, and the software is not that simple, but I don't have to worry about it very much because I, uh, I got uploaded the software. Uh, it's available on GitHub. You just download it, you use it. Um, might need a few modifications, but it should work pretty well. I've actually already tried it on uh, on this thing here, which does have a, a USB connector. Um, just you know, sent the software to this and verified that I could put it on here and, and that it would run. So that's the plan: uh, is to get the uh, the software onto this thing and verify it'll run, and then build the circuit and build the ribbon connector itself, put it all together in a prototype version, see if it works, see if I like it. If I like it, then uh, do something more permanent and have a ribbon controller for my synth. So stay tuned. If you like what you see here, subscribe, hit like, and uh, YouTube will very kindly notify you when I post the next piece of this project. Thank you.